Good morning, St. Andrews. Happy Memorial Day weekend. It is good to be with you today. I am Jane Rideout, one of the um, co-lead pastors along with my husband, Gary, and we're just so happy whether you are at home watching from live stream or you here in the building, we're just happy to be worshiping with you. Um, each week, we feel like there are new faces. I, I meet more people that I have maybe have known about but have not yet. They're coming back, and that's really exciting. And we look forward to everybody coming back and worshiping all together. Um, I have several announcements I need to kind of touch base with. Um, let's begin with a particularly exciting one. So for many years, uh, the, the church has sponsored youth for scholarships. They would apply at the end of the year. They'd have one uh, recipient of a scholarship each year. Well, over the past couple years, um, they weren't always able to do the program, and so the, the fund built up a little bit. And so this past year, we had um, uh, eight kids that um, put in applications for the scholarships, and those who were on the team will tell you they were an amazing group of students. These were some that were graduating from high school and some that are already in college. This was open to both. And one that is actually going to go to seminary. And they made the decision and were able to find the monies. And so we're really proud to be able to say that we have eight students who are recipients of scholarships this year. Very good, significant scholarships. I think as a church we need to celebrate that. Do we? Yep, there they are. Isn't that wonderful? That is one way that all of you invest in the lives of our students. So thank you for that. That's just an amazing thing to be able to, to help support eight of those students. All right. Also, um, if you have kids or grandkids, um, next Sunday night is an important night in the life of the church. That is June 6th. It's our summer kickoff for our youth. So if you have is this for all the youth, if you're a rising 6th grader through a rising 12th grader, it's for the students. But on that particular week, you also bring your moms and your dads and your siblings, and they all come, and it's how we kick off the summer. It's a great evening, and so be mindful of that. Remind your family members, but we need everybody, all of our youth, to, uh, to come next Sunday for the, the summer kickoff. Also, we are having a luncheon next Sunday after church for those people that helped us sanitize and keep everybody safe throughout the year. Now, if you're a regular 11 o'clock person, you never had to sanitize. If you ever sometimes shoot back into one of the other services, you might have been, been grabbed to help sanitize. But there were a group of people that did this for the past year, and it was a lot of work. And I know they didn't always feel like doing it. So we want to honor them. We're going to honor them next um, Sunday, and they've been invited to a lunch. So what I'm asking for you today if any of you would like to help me, um, we've got the food covered, but we need people that would come and serve and greet and make sure everybody gets what they need. That'll be next Sunday at uh, 1215. We'll make sure we feed you as well if you come help serve. So how I'm going to put this following the service, if you want to just come and serve alongside of me, come find me. I'll stay right down here and say, hey, I want to help you, and then I'll, I'll get your name, and um, I'll plan on you joining us to help us serve because... It's, you know, we want to take care of them, we want to honor them, and that's a, an opportunity for you to help us do that. So that's an opportunity, so come find me at the end of the service. So now I think that is all of our announcements. Please note that in front of you we have hymnals in our, in our pews, which is just really exciting, and we're going to take advantage of that in a moment, but right now I'm just going to call Janet forward. So for our praise today, we're going to have a hymn sing because we have hymnals. So we have a lot of praise that they're back. And the 815 people helped bringing them in, and it was like a very, very fun episode. So let's, um, I did walk around and get hymns already so that Jake could have them ready. But if you open your hymnal to page 369, that'll be the first hymn. Thank you. 
next one is 314, coming from the nice ladies that are sitting over there. from my friends, West Virginia friends back there. you to stand for the last song and it is 696. Good morning, everyone. It's greet time, a moment in our worship service where we have an opportunity to say hello to the people around us. Wave, shake hands, hug.
just be mindful of everyone's comfort levels. If you're worshiping online, say hello in the chat space or invite someone to worship this morning by clicking the invite button. We all need some extra love, so if there's someone that's been on our heart lately, take some time today to send a quick text or write a letter to them to let them know you are thinking about them or give them a call to catch up. Good morning, St. Andrews. I'm Miss Lisa, and I'm here with Caroline in our backyard garden to talk to you about the book of Mark, chapter 4. In this scripture, Jesus talks about a man who planted seeds. So here in our garden, we planted seeds a few months ago to help some of our plants grow. Caroline, can you show them what the seeds looked like when we planted them? So now it's been a few months since we planted the seeds and we have some beautiful plants that have started to grow. Uh, Catherine, what types of plants do we have in our garden? We have green peppers, chives, and oregano. Very good. And Caroline, what else do we have? We have basil, mm -hmm. dill, asparagus, and okra. That's right. Very good. So we planted the seeds just like Jesus said in the Bible story and the seeds took root and grew into these beautiful plants that now provide us with some fruits and vegetables and um, some herbs and spices. Spice. So what does our garden have to do with the Bible story today? Well, in the story, Jesus talks about a man planting seeds and those seeds take root and they grow. In a way, Jesus is comparing seeds to our faith. So with our faith in God and us showing love to other people, it's like we're planting seeds of faith in their lives so that hopefully that faith can take root and that can grow so that other people can learn to have a relationship with God too. Your challenge this week is to plant a seed of faith so that someone else can start to grow closer to God. Uh, ways that you could plant a seed of faith would be showing love to someone else by maybe inviting someone to church or doing something nice for someone else. Let's pray. Dear God, thank you for the Bible story about planting seeds of faith. Thank you for loving us and caring for us. Help us spread seeds of faith by showing your love to others so that their faith can begin to grow too. Amen. This is Memorial Day weekend, and we honor those who have lost their lives uh, so we can uh, uh, have the freedoms we have in this country. So I thought we'd start out uh, the prayer time by having a moment of silence uh, to acknowledge and recognize remembering those who have, have passed away in the line of duty. So if you're able, would you please stand, and we'll have a moment of silence. Please stand. Thank you. You may be seated. So let us pray. Gracious God, we gather this morning in this house of worship. We come as we are. We come distracted, weary. We come hopeful, open, knowing that, that you accept us as your children and, and your compassion and listen to our cares and our joys. Be still in us this morning that, that the many voices that clamor for our attention, that we may center ourselves upon you and hear your voice. Speak to us in the music and in the, in the message and the scripture and in the, the quiet time that we may be renewed in our faith and strengthened for your service. 
We thank you, God, for being with us in all seasons and trials and transitions of our lives, in the past and for those that we face in the present and those that we will face in the future. God, give us the confidence and trust that the Holy Spirit will guide us through the uncertainties in our lives. There is no one outside the circle of your care and beyond the reach of your love. Yet sometimes we are so broken down by suffering, grief, anxieties in our lives, physical ailments, stress concerning someone close to us, that we cannot sense the presence of your hope, of your comfort, of your healing in our brokenness. But it is always there. And we know and give you thanks. We offer up the prayers of this congregation, those that have been made known and those, those that lie deep within our hearts. We pray for those who are grieving this day. May you comfort them. We pray for those who are ill, that they be strengthened and made well. May your healing presence surround them and grant continued health to those who are presently recovering or healing. And finally, Lord, bring to our minds this morning those we have forgotten that need our prayers and that need our attention. For it's in Jesus' name we offer this prayer and pray the prayer, prayer together that he taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not to temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Please stand for the hymn.
seated. Our scripture lesson today is from the Gospel of Mark, chapter 4, verses 26 through 32. He also said, he being Jesus, this is what the kingdom of God is like. A man scatters seed on the ground, night and day, whether he sleeps or gets up, the seed sprouts and grows, though he does not know how. All by itself the soil produces grain, first the stalk, then the head, then the full kernel in the head. As soon as the grain is ripe, he puts the sickle to it because the harvest has come. Again, he said, what shall we say the kingdom of God is like? Or what parable shall we use to describe it? It is like a mustard seed, which is the smallest seed you plant in the ground. Yet when planted, it grows and becomes the largest of all garden plants with such big branches that the birds of the air can perch in its shade. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Well, this is Memorial Day weekend, and a lot of times this weekend gets kind of get muddled in with other things. It's the end of the school year. The school's over with. It's the beginning of the summer. Um, and as one being from Indiana, it's uh, Indianapolis 500. So I, I get, uh, uh, so a lot of things get muddled in, and we lose, the, we lose the focus of what this is all about. And it is a day when we remember and honor those who have given the ultimate sacrifice for this country. So I, I like if you're on live stream, if you know of, if you have a family member or a friend that you know that, had, that, that has died in the military or died in the service, please note them on the chat space so we can honor them on this morning. Those the, who died to, to, uh, so that we can have the freedom that we possess today. Now, there are many stories on how Memorial Day started, but one story is that after the Civil War, when the South was devastated, a group of South Southerners did something quite extraordinary. They walked through their ruined cities, the, ruined, the left of their town, to a cemetery. And there they decorated the graves of the soldiers, both Confederate and Union. That's why Memorial Day started out uh, called Decoration Day. So the mothers and the widows and the, and the daughters had buried the dead, and it's symbolic that now they buried their hatred too. The time for healing had come. So the origin of Memorial Day has, has its roots not only remember those who have died or passed away, the lost their lives, but also has its roots in, in the moment of healing for a nation that had been devastated. So it's in the same spirit that we celebrate Memorial Day in our lifetime. And it is a time to reflect. Throughout history, as it is today, men and women leave their families, leave their families behind, their lives behind, to serve in our country's uh, military. They leave their hometowns, not knowing many times what will happen, where they are going to, nor even if they'll ever return. It's, it's, a, it's the same reminder that God gave to Abram, as he was known in Genesis chapter 12. The Lord told him, Leave your country, your people, and your father's household, and to the land I will show you. I will make you a great nation. Notice that God leaves out a very important detail in his command to Abram. Where is he going? He didn't specify. He didn't tell him where he was going. But Abram goes anyway. Abram doesn't know what will happen to him or what challenges face him or what will happen to his wife or his family. Abram went anyway in faith knowing that God had greater things for him, that how he would affect not only his family, his, himself, his nation, but the entire world in our faith. And later God tells Abram that he will make his descendants as numerous as the stars in the sky. Yet Abraham never lived to see that day happen. When Abraham died, he only had one child, Isaac. Yet his descendants were as numerous as the stars in the sky, but Abraham never lived long enough to see that. If Abraham you know, had not taken that first step in faith, God's promises would not have happened. For it was through the bloodline and faith line of Abram that would carry the seed of faith that would ultimately lead to Jesus Christ. Abram planted the seed by taking that first step to go on this journey for which he didn't know where he was gonna go or where it would lead or what would end up. But he took that first step 
and he did not live long enough to see the results, the, 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 the uh, fruits of his labor, but he still went. God many times sends us on a journey too, a journey for which we may not see the complete destination, but for which future genera- generations will benefit. He, he asked us to plant seeds in our lives, knowing that we may never see the full fruits of what it produces but one for which our children's children and our children's children's children will benefit and enjoy the harvest. So on Memorial Day, we remember those that that took that step into the unknown, serving their country, not knowing where it would lead them, not knowing if they would ever return because they believed in a more noble cause that was greater than any one of their individual lives, a cause worth fighting for those whose benefit will extend beyond themselves into generations to come. And because they did, we reap the benefits of their, of their sacrifice. Have you ever wondered why Memorial Day is in May? It, it's not because it commemorates some historic battle or uh, the start of some war or the signing of an armistice. Why then May? Well, for very practical reasons, because it's a time when flowers bloom. Remember, that was the time, the early time when they decorated the graves of those who had died in, in the war. So they needed the flowers to decorate the graves. But the whole idea of springtime, of flowers, the blooming of flowers, reminds us that there's a new hope and a new day. So I read an article that talked of a mother's experience with her daughter, her daughter named Carolyn, uh, one spring afternoon in Northern California, Carolyn called her mother up and said, well, m- Mom, my, my car's in the garage uh, at the shop. Uh, would you come pick me up so I can go get my car? So she does. Her mother comes, but when she came, the, Carolyn, the daughter, jumped into the driver's seat, and she takes off, uh, s- supposedly heading for the, for the mechanic. But after a while, the mother realized she's not heading to the mechanic. She says, well, where are you going? This isn't the way to the garage. Well, we're going to the garage the long way, by way of the daffodils. Mother, I promise you that it will be worth it. What you're about to see will be a truly great experience that you don't want to miss. So after about 20 minutes, they pull up to this gravel, onto a small gravel road, and they saw a small church. And on the far side of the church, there was a hand-lettered sign that said, Daffodil Gardens. They got out of the car, they followed down this path, and they turned around the corner of the path and and looked up, and they could only gasp what they saw, the most beautiful sight they'd ever seen. Before them lay this most glorious sight. It was was a, looked as if someone had taken a a great vat of gold and poured it down the mountain peak and slopes, and there were five acres of these flowers everywhere. It was majestic. But who has done this, the mother said. It's just one woman. She lives on the property, that's her home right there. And she pointed to like a, uh, just a modest A-frame hand, the house that looked small and modest in the midst of all this glory. And they walked up to the house. And on the patio, they saw a poster. The poster said, answers to the questions I know you're asking. The first answer was simple, 50,000 bulbs. The second answer was one at a time by one woman, two hands, two feet, and very little brain. And the third answer was, began in 1958. And the author of the story writes that this was a life-changing experience for her. She thought of this one woman who she never met and will never meet, who more than 50 plus years ago had begun one bulb at a time to plant flowers, to bring this vision of beauty and majesty to this obscure mountaintop that everyone can enjoy now. Planting one bulb at a time, year after year, she had changed the landscape of that area. Our scripture passage today reads, a man scatters seed on the ground. Night and day, whether he sleeps or gets up, the seed sprouts and grows, though he does not know how. And Jesus is saying, this is what the kingdom of God is all about. It's what it's like. We're not given guarantees of of what the future holds. We we just do our part. We commit ourselves to plant the seeds and let God do the rest. Let God do the growth and the nurturing. He will provide the growth. 
but, but that's uncomfortable for us. It, it's, it's, we want to know where our efforts and where our time and our sacrifices will lead us. We, we, we kind of have this attitude, what's in it for me? If I don't know where this is going to take me, count me out. I don't want any part of it. We're so blessed that Abraham didn't have that attitude. Nor when uh, Moses was told in the book of Exodus uh, that he would lead the people out of the bondage of slavery in Egypt to the land he had promised his people. Moses did lead the people out of Egypt, but he never made it to the promised land because that will be done by the next generation, the generation marked by Joshua that reached the land that God had promised to them. Good thing Moses didn't have that what's in it for me attitude when God told them what to do. They would have never left Egypt. There are some things, however, that we should never forget. One of those are the sacrifices that have been made on our behalf that we remember on Memorial, this Memorial Day weekend, that those that made the ultimate sacrifice so we might enjoy the freedoms we have today that planted that seed. We often forget that freedom is costly. And as we stop to remember the freedoms that we have in this country, we also remember that those who paid for their lives defending that freedom, those we never met but benefit from what they did, those who never saw the outcome of their duty. And as we remember th this day to honor those who died for our freedom, we also so fitting to remember the one who died for us to set us free from the bondage of sin from the bondage of spiritual burden. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whoever believes in him shall not perish but have everlasting life. God gave his best of what he had for the ones that he loved the most. Throughout his life, death and resurrection of Jesus Christ, we were given the freedom, freedom through the salvation for the forgiveness of our sins that weigh us down and the con that condemn us, freedom from a life of hopelessness, despair, fear, anguish, the burdens of the miseries of life through, the, through an abundant life that Christ offers to us, and freedom from the finality and the ultimate fear of all of us, death. For through the resurrection of Christ, we know that we are offered eternal life death no longer has its sting death is not the final answer but a new beginning that leads us to a place place where we will see be in the dwelling place of God forever there will be no more tears there will be no more death or mourning or crying or pain for the old order of things have passed away from the seeds of those who who have come before us that we remember on this Memorial Day that has, produced, that has produced the hope and freedom that we share in this country, we give our thanks. Seeds produce fruit. And sometimes those who planted do not even reap the benefits. In John chapter 15, 13, uh, verse 13, Jesus says that greater love has no man that he laid down his life for another. And this weekend we honor those who did just that. Memorial Day points us to Jesus. And that's why I really think that Memorial Day is really a religious Christian holiday, not a secular one, because we're honoring those men and women who did just what Jesus did, the personification of sacrifice. And God works through those who sacrifice. And remember from the seed of the greatest sacrifice of all, when God the Father gave up his son so that we might have freedom and hope and salvation that we all may rest our lives upon. We give thanks on this day too. So here's the question to ponder for today and truly reflect upon in our lives. It goes back to planting those seeds. The question for each one of us is, what seeds are we planting today for which others will reap the benefits of the future? What are we establishing and working toward that we may not see the outcome in our lifetime for which we will not see the fruits of our labor, but it doesn't matter because we're being faithful to God. What legacy will we leave behind for others? Are we planting seeds of discord, strife, turmoil, dishonesty, corruption, vice? Or are we planting seeds of virtue faithfulness, goodness, harmony, understanding, courage, compassion, love for others. 
What will we leave behind for which we will be remembered and others will be truly blessed? What will be our legacy? What seeds are we planting? Now, another point of the scripture lesson today is that it's not all up to us. If it were, we would be in trouble. Jesus' parables are to make the point that the seeds, the seeds, this message and the whole example of Jesus Christ, we scatter are growing even if we do not know how and that the full grain will one day appear and that the yield from the scattered seed will be significant. Jesus said, with what can we compare the kingdom of God? It is like a mustard seed, the smallest of seeds, which when sown upon the ground is the smallest, yet when it is sown, it grows up and becomes the greatest of all shrubs and puts forth large branches so that the birds of the air can make a nest in its shade. So we're not worried about the growing part. We plant the seed with confidence, anticipation, and hope that the growth is happening. The harvest will come. We need not worry about whether God will do God's job. God will. We are to, yet we are concerned ourselves with what are the kinds of seeds we are planting in our lives. What legacy are we leaving behind? If you've ever seen the movie Saving Private Ryan, you know it's a powerful and a very emotional movie. Uh, you know, you watch the movie and you actually feel like you're a veteran after watching that movie, especially the first 20 minutes. Those are painful. It's painful to watch. But it's a very realistic portrayal of the horrors of war, I've been told. Uh, the movie's about a company of men uh, during World War II who had, had a very uncommon uh, challenge, a mission. Their task is to penetrate behind German lines and to rescue one man, to look for a single man, Private James Ryan. You see, Private Ryan's older brothers had all been killed in other battles, and to spare their mother of one more misery, one more loss, it was decided that the surviving Ryan brother needed to go home that he must be found and returned home. The, the task that was given to this group of men was virtually impossible, and they roamed behind the enemy lines, facing danger after danger after danger, to find this one man, Private Ryan. The company of men is led by Captain John Miller, who's played by Tom Hanks. Most of the men, almost all the men, are killed trying to rescue Private Ryan, including Captain Miller. But Ryan is found and brought home. And there's a powerful scene right at the end of the movie. It's the final scene that shows a much older James Ryan where he's walking through with his family, searching, grown family, searching the headstones in the fields of Normandy in France, looking for the headstone of Captain Miller. When he finds the marker, he's so overcome with grief and emotion, he bursts into tears. He turns to his wife and says, tell me I have lived a good life. In disbelief, she, she says, what? What are you talking about? He says, tell me I'm a good man. And she looks lovingly in his eyes and says, you are. The scene speaks to all of us. And how are we to respond to sacrifices that were made for us? Can you imagine Private James Ryan living his whole life reminded and probably haunted by the thought, the fact that so many men died just to save him. Yet we are faced with the same reality on this weekend by those who we honor this Memorial Day week and by the one who ultimately gave his own life that all may be saved, our Savior Jesus Christ. How are we to respond to knowing that someone had died for us? Well, by acknowledging and responding with great gratitude for the work that was done on our behalf and to live the best we can to live a good life that Christ tells us to live, to follow the example of Christ who commands us in John 13 to love one another as I have loved you, so you must love one another. By this, everyone will know that you are my disciples if you love one another. What seeds are you planting? What legacy will you leave behind? Plant the seed, for God will take that seed and nurture and grow into a magnificent harvest that for which future generations will be blessed. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen.
songs of promise and protection speak to all of us, young and old, rich and poor, weak and strong. Many brave men and women have faced the terror of battlefields around the world in our defense, have found comfort in the promise of a loving and gracious God who is present in time of need, a God who promises to a place of eternal rest, a God who through the sacrifice of his only son made a way for us to have a home, an eternal home in the mansions of the Lord. Uh, yesterday I was talking to my brother, my baby brother, he lives in um, Nevada, and we were just talking, and we were talking about our faith journey, and at one point I said, you know, I'm, I'm kind of in one of those places right now, I've been really busy, and I need to really just take time to kind of realign myself, kind of get back into a, a good place, and he's like, wait, he says, you know, I, I know you're saying this, but I think that makes me think about my pastor, he says, it never occurs to me that my pastor would ever be anything but just totally tight with God. And he's a United Methodist as well. He goes to United Methodist Church um, in Las Vegas. And I'm like, come on, give me a break. You, you know me. You know pastors. And I bring this up because so often people think that um, pastors and lay people are different. But really the only difference between us is that we do this full time, yet all of us have a calling. We all have a calling. You have a calling as lay people. We have a calling as a pastor, but it's all the same call. It just looks a little different. I share that because sometimes when it comes to giving, just because you're a pastor doesn't mean it's always easy. Just because you're a pastor doesn't mean there aren't concerns, and sometimes we want to hold back a bit. But the reality is that everybody at times, it's, it's hard to give. Um, when I'm in those spaces where I'm worried, when I'm in those spaces where it's harder for me to give back to God, I have a prayer that I pray. And I've been praying it really for years, I, at different times depending on what the need is. But the prayer sometimes is, God, help me to love you more than I love things. And I don't think I'm unique in that. The other one is, help me to trust you to meet my financial needs. Right now, we have a car in the driveway that's dead, and it's time for another one, and that causes worry. Or, God, give me a generous heart. 
Today, if you're with us, as you're leaving, there are baskets along the back, and you can give there. Of course, you can also jump online, and you can give online through the app. There's all kinds of ways of giving, and, and we're so grateful for your generosity. And when Gary was talking about planting seeds, I thought, this church has planted seeds in the life of those recipients of the scholarship, that that was only possible because of all of your generosity. This is also the fifth Sunday of the month. That means that is the Sunday that the United Methodist Church helps care for our children's home in Enterprise. And so at the end of the service, there are also envelopes that you can grab at the back if you want to give specifically to the United Methodist Children's Home. That's an opportunity to give to a group of kids that you will never see a picture of, that you will never meet, yet they have a need. And because you believe in the ministry of the United Methodist Church to meet those in their need and help raise them up to be successful um, citizens, but also followers of Jesus Christ. There are lots of ways to give. It's just sometimes we have to give ourselves that little nudge. But those are the seeds we are called to plant.
Let us pray. Holy God, above us, among us, within us, we rejoice this day that while you might have chosen to be unknown to us, you have revealed yourself in many ways. Each encounter with you calls us to return blessings with worship, compassion, and service. So when we give this day, we do so in gratitude for all your parental care for us through your creation. When we give this day, we give because in love you gave us Christ, that through him we might find eternal life. When we give this day, your spirit leads your church to reach out in compassion, mercy, and grace to all your children everywhere. In gratitude, we celebrate you, three and yet one. Amen. Please stand for the closing hymn. It is number 555 if you choose to use your hymnal. now receive this benediction. And now may the peace of God which passes all understanding keep your hearts and minds in the knowledge and the love of God and of his son Jesus Christ in the power of the Holy Spirit and the blessings of God the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be with you now and forevermore. Amen.